what's really happened So many people know so many different answers So many times asking the same So many times playing the old game What do you know, what do you remember When a star passes by Out of sight Welcome to my art haul. So as you just saw in the previous clips, I went to the art store today and I had in my mind already a list of the things that I wanted to buy. Unfortunately, I was not able to find a white pen, so I kind of expected that. But I did find a couple extra stuff that I don't know if I needed, but I got it, so I'm excited to share those with you. So first, um, something that was top of my list was to get black undergate glaze um, for ceramics. So black is a little weird for me because as a painting major, they always told me not to use black straight out of the bottle. It just makes your paintings look so flat and it's just not a good idea. And that's something that I've lived by my whole life. So that's why I didn't buy black when I first got glazes. But I think it's a little bit different with pottery. <laughs> I find it that it's a little bit harder to mix exactly the things that you want and especially since you don't know how the colors are going to come out until you fire it and then it comes out. Um, it's a lot harder to know whether you want to risk a whole piece with a color that you blended together. So I went ahead and get, got black for a bowl that um, I really want to put a black sky on there and kind of in that same area i got these uh flow line squeeze bottles um so when i went to do pottery at one of those painting places they had these and they filled it with glaze and then they have the fine tips and then you can squeeze out and draw fine lines onto your pottery and so I've really been wanting to try that because I don't think that you can get a lot of the same detail with brushes. Um, I thought I would do a lot of painting on my pottery since I am primarily a painter, but I find that I'm not really attracted to that kind of a thing in my pottery. I like more solid colors, just solid shapes. So um, I don't know, I didn't know if it was just the material or what was going on, so I decided to try these squeeze bottles and see if that will tempt me into doing finer details. And yeah, just to add something different to my pottery. Another thing that I've been super interested in with regards to pottery is the idea of textures and carving as a way to really create um, the decoration elements instead of using glaze as the decoration elements. So I got this set of tools and they're just little um, different carving tools here. So I don't know if you can see them really well. They have different tips. Um, some are more curved and some are more rectangular. And so they're meant to carve out shapes in your pottery and I don't really know how these are supposed to work. I'm not a potter, as I've said before, but I've been wanting to try more intricate carving designs on my work. So hopefully 
these will work perfectly for that. Another thing that I ended up grabbing as I was browsing through the shelves was this pH neutral glue and it's good for book binding. Uh, so I did take a book binding class when I was in college and my mind was just blown by all the different techniques and all the different things that you can do with book binding. So you can use it as an art form, create like artistic books. Um, some people create their own zines or you can use it as um, just to make your own scrapbooks and put blank pages inside. And that's primarily what I want to do. I've been wanting to make my own journal again, maybe start selling some of them. So I decided to go ahead and grab a bottle of this glue because I didn't have glue anymore. And hopefully that will kickstart my determination to get back into book binding. This girl on TikTok, and I can't remember her name now, but she made these amazing pieces with oil pastels. And it had been so long since I tried oil pastels. I used to have some when I was younger, and I did not like them at all. <laughs> but this was before I went to college and really kind of learned about oils and learned about different techniques and how important it is to kind of experiment with different mediums, even if you don't immediately like them. So I ended up giving those oil pastels away. Um, so I didn't have any, since I wanted to try them, I decided to go ahead and purchase them. Um, it was really hard to choose which ones I wanted because the first ones that I saw were in the watercolor section and they were water soluble oil pastels. So I was leaning towards those because I hadn't seen any other ones. And in general, this idea of oil items that use water instead of traditional oil mediums it was kind of interesting to me. But in the end, I ended up looking more and then I found this whole other section with oil pastels and they had a variety of different price points and I ended up going for these um, Gallery Mungo Artist Soft Oil Pastels. And I chose these because um, I was trying them out on the sheets that they had there and these felt just so much creamier than the other ones and the price point was a little bit higher. Um, it actually surprised me how cheap the other options for oil pastels were. Like you could get a six pastel set for like five dollars or um, a, I don't know 12 set oil pastels for like um, twelve dollars or something like that and it surprised me. Um, so I ended up grabbing these and these are 24 uh, colors and I think it was around seventeen dollars um, which was a little bit pricier than the other options that I was looking at but since I did like the smooth feel of this uh, brand when I was trying them out I decided that I wanted to go ahead and try these out instead of the cheaper ones. And you know, I'm always of the mindset that just because it's more expensive doesn't mean that it's better. Personally, I think that it's smarter sometimes to start at the most ex least expensive stuff because if you like it, you'll already know that it's not that expensive and it's something that you like versus if you go for the most expensive one, you may definitely like it, but there may have been cheaper options that you also would have enjoyed. But sometimes it's also true that, especially when you're trying new things, if you try an item that is of low quality and then you end up not liking it, um, it could have just been that the item's quality wasn't good enough and that's why you didn't like it and you would have actually enjoyed it if you had tried another item. So yeah guys, that is my haul for today and if you guys have tried any of these materials before and you guys have any tips on how to use them, go ahead and leave a comment below because I would greatly appreciate it.
called Monet's Haystack at Giverny um, and it was an oil on canvas originally but I thought the texture would be so lovely to work with um, with my oil pastels and so by now you've seen the progress so this is what I came up with which um, let's see them side by side I'm actually quite proud of it I mean it's not perfect by a long shot but some of the colors are off I didn't leave myself enough space at the bottom um, the haystack is too small but overall I think that um, the general mood of the painting is there and I really like how the pastels uh, captured a lot of the texture of the original painting and let's peel the tape off and see what it looks like So ta-da! That's the finished drawing in my sketchbook of Monet's Haystacks at Giverny. Um, yeah, and I did that with my brand new oil pastels. And they are these guys right here. And overall, I'm really excited to keep playing around with these guys because it was pretty fun. I liked the texture, I liked the smoothness. Um, I like that you could do a lot of different techniques on them. Um, you can do blending with a cloth and then you can do scraping with a toothpick. And I've heard that you can even like um, scrape off part of the oil pastels and blend them with some oil and then paint directly on the surface with that so I didn't try that with this painting but you know it sounds interesting so I might give that a go next time.